Hello friends. It gives me great joy to share an interview with you today that I recently did with Matt Rosencrans, who is one of the associate pastors at 7th and James Baptist Church in Waco, Texas. While going to seminary this past year, I have had the pleasure of getting to know Matt, who is an absolute joy to be around. In our interview, he shares his testimony of what led him to ministry, and he provides encouragement to fellow ministers who are navigating through these difficult days on how we as a church might best serve others in a time of social distancing. It was a blast, as always, getting to talk with Matt, and I hope that his words bring you some encouragement today. So here it is. Here's our interview. Be blessed. All right, welcome. So I'm here with Matt Rosencrantz, who is the associate pastor of 7th and James Baptist Church in Waco, Texas, right next to the Baylor campus. And so, uh, Matt, if you want to introduce yourself, uh, anything you would like viewers to know about you and what you do at 7th and James. Well, thank you, Josh, and thank you for having me on your show. I appreciate this opportunity to kind of talk with you and share with you in ministry. Uh, I am the associate pastor at 7th and James, one of the two associate pastors at 7th and James. I have the pleasure and an honor to, to work alongside of my wife, uh, Leslie, who is also an associate pastor at the church. And we have been working together uh, at that church for almost 15 years now, which is, it's been a joy. So we are kind of co-laborers, co-ministers, uh, but also a married couple. For my responsibilities, uh, I uh, have the pleasure of being uh, in charge of our college ministry and getting to be a college minister. Uh, I also work with our missions and our outreach committees. Um, I oversee building and grounds and repairs and maintenance and our custodial staff. And so we have a, as you know, a fairly large campus, a church campus, and it takes a, quite a bit of work to maintain and upkeep the buildings and the facilities. And so a good part of my week is, is spending on caring for the church, the literal physical uh, building. Uh, and then, of course, there are all kinds of other duties that get assigned over the course of a week or a month or a year. Um, and so I find myself at times involved in pastoral care or um, even helping set up or tear down from events. And so I get to do a lot, a lot of different things over the course of my week at church. That sounds really amazing and just uh, uh, really cool. Um, so I would like to ask what, um, as we're talking and uh, thinking about ministry, what exactly led you to want to do ministry in the first place? And specifically also, in addition to that, what led you to Truett Seminary? I know that you received your Master of Divinity at Truett, uh, as I'm working on right now. And so what led you to ministry and specifically what led you to Truett? Yeah, so I grew up in a uh, church-going family. Uh, we went to church every Sunday, whether we wanted to or not. Uh, but it never really meant a lot to me. I had kind of a Sunday morning faith uh, where... Uh, um, all of my faith, my spiritual life was really relegated to Sunday school and worship, and then, and then it didn't matter for the rest of the week. Uh, in high school, um, specifically my senior year, I had a group of friends um, who really kind of started to challenge me uh, in terms of faith and spirituality. They were Christian. And it, um, one of them asked me if I was a Christian, and I said, well, yes, of course. And they said, well, why? What makes you a Christian? And I said, well, I go to church. And they said, well, that's not enough. And I didn't like that response, uh, and it made me very angry. Um, but it did, it did kind of plant a seed, a question of um, what makes somebody a Christian? What does it really mean to be a Christian? And that was a great kind of opening, a door open for me to kind of explore what does it really mean to be a Christian? And when I went off to college, I um, had a lot of friends who were experimenting with drugs, sex, and rock and roll, and I decided to experiment uh, with the Christian faith and denominations. And what I mean by that is I attended a Methodist church and a non-denominational church and a Baptist church, a Pentecostal church, um, a Catholic church. I kind of visited all around and I got really involved in a number of different campus ministries. I went to the University of Louisville. That's where I, uh, I grew up in Louisville and, and that's where I got my undergrad. And I, I just kind of, I just decided to kind of explore uh, all that I could find in terms of Christianity on a college campus which was a great experience uh, in a lot of ways. And, and one thing that was very helpful is I encountered the Methodist uh, campus minister, Greg Hatfield, uh, an incredible man, uh, a very helpful, a very 
uh, um, comforting presence uh, for those first couple of years of college uh, where I was still trying to figure out a lot. And near the end of my freshman year, I was really struggling with picking a major. I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew I had to go to college, but I didn't know what to do with it after I got there. And I'd gone through the course catalog over and over again and looked at all the different degree plans. And I had shared with my campus minister, I was really struggling to figure out uh, what I wanted to do in terms of a, of a degree and then also a future career. And he looked at me and said, well, what about ministry? It was a question I'd, I'd never thought of. Um, and I think he maybe saw something that I hadn't seen yet, um, but it also opened another door, kind of another avenue to explore, of, well, what is ministry and why would I want to do that? And so I spent the next couple of years in college exploring a call to ministry. And I, as I got involved with the Baptist Student Organization, they also had a, a fantastic college minister there, Angela Perkins Girdley, who really kind of helped nurture uh, um, and, and give me opportunities to explore a call and ministry. I got involved in leading Bible studies and, and leading worship uh, through our campus ministry. And it was a very formative time in my life. And it also, after college, opened a door to do some internships. I did some internships in college ministry at different campuses around Kentucky, where I met another college minister who said, why not go to seminary? And uh, again, these questions that really just kind of pierced the soul. And uh, I had no desire to go to seminary, and uh, she impressed upon me uh, that it would be worth my consideration. And so I started looking at different seminaries, and she was a Baylor undergrad. And recommended Truett, and, and I'll be honest with you, I had no desire to come to Texas, let alone Waco. Uh, Waco didn't have the best reputation. This was long before the silos, and um, I, I, she she kind of kept after me. This was a, a campus minister by the name of Sharon Felton. She kept pressing me, check out Truett, check out Truett, and so I scheduled a visit uh, literally for the last day of class. I, I pushed it off to the very end, and I flew out and I planned on coming to get a free t-shirt and free lunch and then check it off the list and say, I came, I saw, I left, I can now go somewhere else. Um, and it was by the end of the first day, I was here for two days. Um, I was already starting to make plans. There was something about uh, the, the environment of Truett, uh, the focus on both academics and spiritual formation. Um, there, as I met with the recruiter, different professors and students, um, it really kind of resonated with where I was in life. Uh, and Truett just really, I, I love how Truett is structured in terms of a fairly small school, um, great, uh, relatable, accessible professors, uh, but again, a great importance on both academics and spiritual formation. It really drew me uh, to Truett. And so within a couple of months, I loaded up a car in a U-Haul and I was here in Waco and I had a three-year plan. I was gonna fly in and fly right out of Waco. I had planned on uh, this three years of get my degree and get back out of here. And I've now been here 18 years. Uh, I did eventually graduate, um, but I met Leslie here. We met at seminary and of course got jobs uh, here in town. And I've just really grown to love Waco. and uh, have grown to love the opportunities that have kind of uh, become available here and serving in Waco. So uh, what really led me to Truett was just other people kind of nudging me along the way, kind of seeing a call in my life, but also seeing that I needed to become equipped, needed tools uh, to be the best minister that I can be, um, and to follow my calling as best I can. And so that that led me to Truett, and, and um, I'm, I'm grateful that I kind of relented and came for a visit. Um, uh, I was just really kind of one of those Holy Spirit moments where you just kind of, you just kind of know this is where I need to be. And it was actually the third seminary I visited. Um, and it was, it was one that I had no plans on coming to, but it just really, it just, it just, all of a sudden you just had this sense of, I belong here. That's, that, that's a really amazing story. Uh, great to hear how, um, God worked through, uh, your life and all those, you know, different stages of what led you to your calling to ministry. And as you have done ministry over the years, what challenges have you faced while in ministry? And what has been most encouraging to you in the midst of those challenges? So it, 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 some days, and especially now kind of in the season that we're in, it, it almost seems like every day can be a challenge. Uh, one of the things that I absolutely love about church ministry and specifically kind of my role as associate pastor, where I have kind of ministry, but then also administrative responsibilities, 
is that every day is kind of new and different. And, and you never know when you show up to church if an air conditioner is going to be broken or if somebody is sick and been rushed to a hospital or if an event has been canceled last minute or has been or we get a call and request, oh, we need to meet at the church immediately. We get set up. So you just never really know. And in a lot of ways, that's really exciting. I kind of, I kind of look forward to every day being different. Um, I never know, especially in college ministry, I absolutely love working with college students. Um, but college students go through all sorts of highs and lows. Um, and, and they need their college minister sometime in the morning, sometime in the afternoon, sometimes in the evening or late at night. And so you just never know when you're going to get a call or a text from a student who says, I have this deep theological question, or um, I'm in a very difficult spot, and I need, I need somebody to, to, to kind of comfort me. And so every day is something new and different, which I really love. But, but on the other hand, it's kind of a double-edged sword. Um, kind of the lack of predictability can, can, can really be challenging. Um, sometimes uh, ministers are called into situations that they have absolutely no preparation or even no expertise. I've been in hospital rooms uh, alongside a, a bed of a church member and a family member is, says, you know, the doctor has told us this, what do you think we should do? I'm not, I'm not a medical expert, um, but I know how to, how to pray. And uh, so I find myself in situations that I'm maybe not necessarily prayer, prepared for um, or even uh, feel at all an expert in um, but, but I've been asked to kind of fulfill a role as, as a minister. And so um, it's a double-edged sword, uh, both something fun and exciting every day is different. But on the other hand, it, it can really wear on you. And, and one of the other things that's really been challenging is that there is rarely a completion where everything is done and you have a break. Uh, we're always preparing for what's next. Uh, right now, we're in the season of, of Eastertide, as we call it, uh, for those of us who are kind of liturgically minded. Uh, Pentecost is coming, but then summer is coming. And then, of course, in the fall, the fall will be there with new fall events for students, hopefully, this year. Um, and then, of course, before long, it'll be Advent, and then we're getting ready for Christmas. And so we're always kind of getting ready for what's next. And rarely do you have kind of this stop where you can just be still for a little while and and so there's always kind of this constant, I, I always go to bed with things that I didn't get done that day. And I always wake up with thinking, I've got to finish what I didn't get done yesterday. And that can really be a challenging in that you have to kind of develop the coping skills and the coping mechanisms to kind of realize you're not going to get it all done every day, but you do your best and you return the next day and, and do what you can. So, yeah, very good. Um, so as a church minister, uh, what encouragement would you give to other ministers as they are doing virtual gatherings, weighing when to meet in person again, and how especially they can attend to their own spiritual health and all of this? Golly, great question. And, you know, I, I sometimes want to think, what, what's this big new thing that, that we can come up with? But the reality is that there, there are some things that haven't changed even in a world that's been turned upside down. Um, God is still God. Um, God still calls us. God has still sent the Holy Spirit to be with us, to guide us, to comfort us, to nurture us. And so even though the world has been turned upside down, uh, I find what's been very helpful for me and hopefully will be helpful for others is just to remember and, and to think about and to hold on to the things that haven't changed. Um, God is still God. We are still God's people. God still calls us to, to be and to do and to act in certain ways. Uh, the priorities before still matter today, uh, to love the Lord God with our heart, mind, and soul as best we can, and to love our neighbors as ourselves, um, to live in a manner worthy of the one who has called us. All of these things that were important before the pandemic, I think uh, many, most of them, especially the, the, the big ones, are still important today. And so um, for me, that's been very helpful is to kind of remind myself, wait, who is God? What is God's call on my life? Uh, how, how do I live into that? Uh, that's been really helpful. It's just kind of that reminder of what's, what's still the same. Uh, nurturing the soul is just, it's, it's, I think, even more important now than it ever has been before for ministers. Uh, uh, we, <laughs> um, we are doing a number of things right now that I have never done before in my ministry. Um, and then also, um, I'm not at all, like I said earlier, not at all equipped to. Uh, we're having to learn about the spread of viruses uh, and to be somehow 
medical experts when we're not. <laughs> and so we're uh, working really hard to rely on those who are. Listen to doctors, listen to the medical experts. Um, but one of the things that just has just really struck me, a minister friend kind of shared um, on, I think it was Facebook, a picture of somebody uh, who was holding a phone and the battery was, was at zero. Um, and, and the caption read, you would never let your phone go to zero. So don't do the same for yourself. You've got to recharge yourself. And um, it, it was said more cleverly than that. But um, taking care of yourself, resting, detaching uh, from ministry, um, um, finding a chance to, to, to engage in a hobby, something fun in this time. Uh, find those things that nurture and feed the soul. Uh, books, movies, TV, whatever it is. Um, I, I think those things were important before the pandemic, but I think are even more important uh, today. We're, we're kind of, we're, we're serving the midst of a crisis. And, and everyone can, I think, handle or manage a certain level of stress. For some people it's here, some people it's here, some people it's here. But for most of us, we can all kind of handle a fairly significant amount of stress as long as it goes down at some point. We're, we're living in a time where there's just kind of this sustained high stress level. Um, and I think that's why self-care uh, and caring for yourself and others is just even more important today than, than it ever has been. So as the associate pastor at 7th and James, what would you like viewers to be in prayer for, specifically for you and for the church? So we cover your prayers uh, to discern what's what's good and right um, in terms of just how to continue to be with one another. Uh, there, there's a lot of talk about um, churches starting to hold in-person worship again. And what does that really look like? And what do we need to do in order to do that safely and carefully? Uh, we have many members in our congregation who fall in the vulnerable category. And their safety and well-being is just, it's just critically important to all of us. And uh, while there's maybe a kind of a rush to be back together again in person, um, I, I, I'm just really kind of anxious and, and nervous about um, doing that safely. And so I, I really appreciate all the prayers and discerning what is good and, and wise uh, and most helpful uh, for how we continue to be the church uh, in this day and the days ahead. I have a a real big concern for uh, all of the graduates right now, high school, college, graduate level. Uh, I've spoken to several in recent weeks, and these are very bittersweet times. These are when they have their their last class and their last final and their last group gathering and the, the moving out of the dorm or the apartment and all these kind of special moments and graduation and graduation party and all of these really special kind of um, kind of moments that happen over the course of your last semester and and all that just went away almost overnight in March and a lot of our graduates have lost a lot of those special moments that happen at the end of, of a school year and a semester and um, I really grieve for our, our graduates right now um, also just having to kind of bear the responsibility of moving forward some of them going into a workforce that's now into question going into careers that are now into question. Um, and I just kind of grieve for what they've lost and what they're having to face. Uh, I, I take a lot of comfort in seeing how strong they are uh, and knowing that um, uh, uh, they're, gonna, they're gonna find a way to work through this. And of course, together we'll get through it. Um, but that's been on my heart a lot uh, for our graduates right now in this season. Um, this is, it's very different for them than, than a lot of people before and after. and so. Just want to make sure we, we hold them close in prayer. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and before we uh, close the interview, uh, the discussion that we're having, um, if you're okay with it, I'll uh, close us in prayer. Um, and Please, yeah. we'll pray specifically for uh, 7th and James and also in a broader sense for college graduates and high school graduates um, who are having to deal with just, you know, this complete uh, upside down, topsy-turvy uh, hindrance in their lives, you know, something, of course, they didn't plan at the beginning of the year. Um, I'm sure, I, I remember my senior year in high school, I was just, you know, excited with senioritis and planning for, you know, okay, all that stuff that, you know, high school students and uh, 
when I was in college, you know, college students look forward to at the end of their um, time. So we'll, we'll be in prayer for uh, high school and college graduates as well. Um, but if you will uh, join me in prayer, we'll, uh, we'll pray for those things. Gladly. Yeah. Gracious and Heavenly Father, uh, thank you for this uh, virtual time together. Uh, thank you for Matt and the ministry that you have called him to. Um, I ask that you be with him and his family, that you keep them uh, safe and healthy, especially during this global pandemic, God. Uh, I ask that uh, you be with his ministry, that you be with the Church of Seventh and James. Uh, just be with them as they discern, uh, you know, when to meet in person again, how that will look, uh, and just all the different ministries that their church is, uh, their church is involved in. I just ask that you be with them in their discernment process, uh, be with church members and churchgoers who um, are longing to once again be in fellowship with each other, God. And I ask that you also be with um, all of our uh, other churches as they make those same decisions, as they discern uh, what ministry will look like in the midst of this pandemic going forward. God, just be with churches, be with ministers. Um, and also, Lord, we, we lift uh, high school and college graduates up to you, God. Um, I can't imagine what uh, feelings and concerns they are going through uh, as they transition into the next phase of their life um, in a way that they certainly didn't plan for but are facing right now. God, just be with them, comfort them. And remind them of your presence, God, that you're there for them, that you love them and care for them. And they can still do wonderful and mighty things with you on their side, God. And so just be with them and encourage them. And it's in your name we ask all of these things. Amen. Amen. So Amen. thank uh, you for praying, Josh. Yeah. Thank you, Matt, for joining us today uh, for this uh, my first interview on my YouTube channel. So um, you did great. Will, you did great. Yeah, hopefully this will continue going well. So uh, thank you for joining us. And um, I guess I'll sign off. And at some point, I'll probably think of a better way to sign off on these uh, interviews. But for right now, just uh, blessings upon you and go in peace. And I am now going to click the stop record button. So I hope that interview provided some encouragement, and I promise I will come up with a better way to end interviews next time. But until then, have a blessed and wonderful day. Thanks for watching.